Welcome to this lecture series on environment and ecology presented by Mentors for IS in association with Bangalore IS Academy and Namak APSC. So in this video, we'll be completing our discussion about ecological succession. This is the third important function of an ecosystem. So we are going one by one and we are covering each and every function of an ecosystem. So this is the third important function of an ecosystem that is ecological succession. Okay, so this particular term that is ecological succession refers to the process by which the structure of a biological community evolves over time. So for example, take a forest, the tropical wet evergreen forests that you have along the western cuts. Do you think the forests have been there always or did it evolve over a period of time from a barren piece of land? Of course, it took hundreds of years for the forest to develop from a barren piece of land. So this process of an entire forest developing of, uh, and evolving over a barren piece of land is known as succession. That is the steady and gradual change in a species of a given area with time and changing environment. So here what we will be doing is that we will be distinguishing ecological succession into two types that is primary succession and secondary succession. Now primary succession occurs essentially in lifeless areas and Secondary succession, that is the second type of classification, secondary succession occurs in areas where a community previously existed but now has been removed. So you'll understand more when we discuss about each of these successions, that is primary succession and secondary succession. So first we'll take up primary succession. Now primary succession begins in barren areas. For example, uh, you could consider uh, say you have an underwater volcanic eruption and due to this underwater volcanic eruption a new island has been formed or you could take a bare rock which has been exposed by retreating glacier. So as of now you don't have an ecosystem itself, a very diverse ecosystem on that piece of barren land because it has to be worked upon. So this is where primary succession comes into picture. So what I'm trying to say is that when you have a new island formed due to an underwater volcanic eruption or you have a bare rock which has just been exposed due to retreating glacier, now there is a new habitat which is waiting to be colonized for the first time. So what will happen is that First, weathering and natural forces will start to break down the substrate rock enough for the establishment of a few plants and lichens which demand very little soil requirements. So these are actually known as the pioneer species, the first to occupy a new piece of land. So what I'm trying to say is that once a new piece of land has been exposed as, or has been formed and now there is a possibility of a new habitat colonizing in that particular piece of land for the first time. After weathering, when soil just begins to form, few plants will get established over there. So the first species to get established on that piece of land, they are known as the pioneer species because they are pioneering there for the first time. Now what will happen is, over hundreds of years, the pioneer species will further break down the rock and also add organic matter providing for the formation of soil. So this process will repeat multiple times during succession where at each stage new species will move into the area due to the favorable changes made to the environment by the preceding species and may also be successful in replacing their predecessors. So, at some point, the community may reach a relatively stable state and stop changing in composition. This is when the biotic interactions become so intricate that no new species can be admitted. And this 
final stage is known as the climax community which is a very stable stage and can endure for hundreds of years for example a fully developed rainforest so i want you to understand this very clear just take it with respect to this particular diagram so the first plan to colonize an area is called the pioneer community or the pioneer species you already know that the final stage of succession is called the climax community which is very stable and can endure for a sufficiently longer period of time until until and unless it is disturbed by any external force or uh, any external agent the stage leading to the climax community are called the successional stages or the intermediate species and sometimes in some sources it might also be referred to as the seral community so i hope this is clear it will start with the pioneer species and it will end with the climax community whereas the transition is by the intermediate species also known as the seral community okay so next we move on to the secondary succession now the secondary succession follows a major disturbance such as a fire or a flood or even human intervention such as deforestation which will destroy a mature stable community and therefore the area is now available for recolonization meaning primary succession had already happened but due to some reason this prime this climax community is destroyed and hence this particular region is once again available to be recolonized where this entire process of pioneer species intermediate species and climax community will take on this entire range of succession will be carried out all over again then it is known as secondary succession so the stages of secondary succession are similar to those of primary succession but the only difference is that this is recolonization and not colonization for the first time however unlike primary succession which always begins on a barren surface secondary succession begins in environments that already possess soil therefore secondary succession is relatively faster when compared to primary succession please remember secondary succession is relatively faster than uh, primary succession meaning if uh, primary succession succession is going to take 1000 years i'm just giving an, uh, uh, an example if primary succession takes 1000 years secondary succession may only take about 200 years okay so i hope this difference between primary succession and uh, secondary succession is clear unlike primary succession secondary succession always starts with well developed soil formed at that site and also secondary succession is much faster relatively faster when compared to primary succession okay so there are certain characteristics of uh succession that is whenever you have succession taking place please remember you can just make a note of this you'll have increased productivity you'll have increased biodiversity the food webs become more and more complex there is a shift of nutrients from reservoirs there is increase in niche development also succession would occur faster in areas existing in the middle of large continents because the seeds of plants belonging to different seral communities would reach there much faster and help in the establishment of a climax community <clears throat> okay so next apart from primary succession and secondary succession we have something known as autogenic succession and allogenic succession now if you've already understood primary and secondary succession we'll move on ahead with autogenic and allogenic succession very simple when succession is brought about by vegetation and organisms in the community itself it is known as autogenic succession for example when larger species like trees mature they produce shade on to the developing forest floor that tends to exclude light requiring species therefore 
shade requiring species will invade and replace light requiring species so this succession this replacement is induced by vegetation and organisms in the community itself and therefore it is known as autogenic succession the other type is allogenic succession unlike autogenic succession allogenic succession is caused by external environmental influences like soil erosion leaching water logging etc which will be, which will induce and establish certain unfavorable conditions because of which the existing communities may perish or it might not be suitable for them and hence some other species will invade and it will replace also sometimes animals like pollinators and herbivores may also play a role okay next we have autotrophic and heterotrophic succession very simple as the name suggests the you have autotrophic or heterotrophic succession this is depending on who is causing the succession so succession in which initially green plants are much greater in quantity is known as autotrophic succession and the ones in which heterotrophs are greater in quantity is known as heterotrophic succession very simple uh, if autotrophs if autotrophs are, uh, are larger in number it is autotrophic succession if the succession is caused by animals which are larger in number heterotrophs which are larger in number then it is known as heterotrophic succession okay then we have seasonal and cyclic succession so unlike secondary succession these types of vegetation changes are not dependent on disturbance but are periodic changes arising from fluctuating species interaction or recurring events it is therefore a change in the ecosystem on a cyclical basis on a cyclic basis for example you may have some plants which remain dormant for a long period of time and emerge all at once and which may replace some other species this is known as seasonal and cyclic succession okay so with this we complete our discussion about ecologic succession it is actually a very simple topic and but an important function of the ecosystem so there is still one more function of the ecosystem yet to be completed so we will be discussing the last function of the ecosystem in the next video so thank you for watching if you do have any doubts please do write in the comment section